Hi, good morning. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning. Today is May 28th, 2020. We're almost finished with week 14 of Grammar and Context 2. We're going to continue today. Yeah, we've been spending a few days this week talking about love. We worked on some sentence uh, stems and we're working with certain conjunctions. So, but, and because today, and we're going to continue working with sentence stems and the connectors. So, but, and because today we're also going to be working in teams a little bit differently than we did what we did yesterday and the day before. Four minutes, but it's very important, guys, to make sure that you follow the instructions. Um, I went through and graded yesterday's activity, and it's very important that you follow very closely uh, the instructions as explained and how and as as they're written out in the document where we're working. Okay, so today we're going to work similarly as we worked yesterday but in different teams. And again, you're gonna be given some instructions. So I'm gonna to try to explain the instructions and they're also gonna be included in the document. Make sure that you follow those instructions and ask during the class if you have questions about those instructions. Today, we're gonna to talk about wisdom and I'm gonna share my screen to show you what we're gonna work on here today. So we're into week 14, Grammar and Context 2. And if you scroll down under activities, we're going to be looking at this wisdom. Now, in uh, today's activity, we're going to be working in Microsoft Teams like what we did yesterday. We're going to be looking and working in a Microsoft Word document. But today, what I'd like for you to do in your teams, and I'm gonna break up, we're gonna break out in teams here in a minute. We're gonna break out in teams seven. And so your first task is to watch this video about wisdom. This video talks about wisdom. It answers the question, which perspective should you have, right? So the, po the, uh, the, uh, the video talks about what wisdom is in terms of answering this question, which perspective should we have? And the video talks about seven key points. Those points are listed here. Radical open-mindedness, Feed yourself ideas, being able to hold contradictions in your mind, empathy, remove ideas from people, don't just take advice, share perspective, and letting go of your ego. So as you're watching this video, I'm gonna, you're going to break out into teams first. So each one of you is going to be assigned one of these seven aspects. I'd like for you to watch the whole video but I want you to focus on one of these seven aspects, one of these seven points. Now, depending on how many of you there are, you may have one, maybe uh, two of you in, in your group. Okay, so I'm going to create random groups, but you're going to be assigned one of these. If I assign you to breakout room two, then you know that you need to focus on feed yourself ideas. If you're assigned, let's say, breakout room number six, then you need to focus on don't just give advice, share perspective. So the number or the team number that you're assigned to or the breakout number that you're assigned to is going to be the number here or the point that you need to focus on that comes from this video. All right, so I'm going to assign you some uh, into teams. You're going to know which of these you need to focus on. You might be working individually. You might be working with a partner. Depends on how many of you there are today 
and uh, how the breakout rooms divide up. And we're going to go into Microsoft Teams under our team called Grammar and Context 2, under Files, under Week 14, and you'll notice that we have a second document called Wisdom. The last two days we worked on this Word document, Love. Today we're going to work on or work in this document called Wisdom. Now, let me open this up into the browser. You'll notice here it begins with the question, what is wisdom? And then a more specific question, which perspective should you have? Here are the instructions. Please read the instructions. All right, so we're going to, you're going to be assigned a team and you're going to be assigned to one of these points, just as I mentioned before. Okay, watch the video. Again, the video that I just uh, showed in uh, the virtual classroom. Okay, watch that video first. And then, based on your point, I would like for you to create a sentence stem. Okay, now the sentence stem needs to relate to some aspect, some idea, some specific idea that relates to your point, right? You only need to include one sentence, the point that you are assigned, okay? Not all of them, just the one that you're assigned. And then based on the one sentence stem, each one of these points right, is going to have one sentence stem. Based on that sentence stem, then, you need to develop as a team three versions of the sentence stem. Each, those, each of those three versions are going to include the following connectors, just like what we did yesterday. So, but, and because. Like yesterday, make sure, let me go back and show you here real quick. Just like la uh, yesterday, just like yesterday, we should have your names after the, your point, okay? So list out your first name only after, after the point that relates to to your, uh, to your task. Then include the sentence stem and then the sentences. Make sure that the sentences are single spaced and they have numbers, just like this. This is an example. You've got your heading, your sentence stem, and then you have your sentences and they're numbered, okay? For our purposes, in this case, you're probably gonna have three sentences only instead of four because you only need to include each of the three uh, sentence connectors. So, but, or because. And since all of you are gonna have either one or two of you in your groups, three sentences will be enough. All right, we're gonna continue working in this document, but the first thing would be to watch the video I encourage you to take notes to make, uh, especially as it relates to your particular point. I want you to watch the entire video because all these points relate to each other. But again, focus on just your point that you're going to uh, uh, focus on. All right. So, are there any questions? about today's activity before we break out into our groups. All right, so we're going to break out into groups. It looks like we're going to have one to two participants in each group. Again, there are seven breakout rooms. The number of the breakout room is going to relate to the point that you're going to focus on from the video. So once we create the rooms, go ahead and go into the rooms. Start talking with your classmates, watch the video, and begin deciding on the sentence stem 
work together on creating the sentence stem that you want to uh, include that supports your point. All right, so I've created the rooms. If anyone has problems getting into the room, let me know. And, and uh, we'll start from there. It looks like some of you are gonna have two. Some of you are going to only have one in your, in your room. Okay, if you guys have any questions, I'm gonna go ahead and mute my mic. If you guys have questions about today's task, unmute your mic and, uh, and let me know. Let me know, uh, Fernanda and Mariana, if you guys have uh, problems getting into your breakout room, let me know. Sometimes that helps if you need to exit and come back. Uh, you can do that if, if, that, uh, if that helps. But let me know if you guys have questions or problems getting into the room. Mariana, are you having uh, issues getting into the breakout room? In fact, I see you twice. I'm not sure if you are signed in twice with another device or what the why you're listed twice. But I do notice that you're listed twice in the participants and that you're not in a, a room. So let me know if you're having some issues. And if you need to, go ahead and sign out. I still see you're signed in under one, uh, I, I'm assuming one device, a particular device. I'm not sure if it's a phone or if it's a computer. Um, yes, uh, go ahead. Uh, I just entered to the meeting and I went to my, to my, to my record room and I'm alone and I don't know what to do. I'm asking to my classmates, but no one answers, so I don't know what to do. Okay, so you're not able to get into the breakout room? Is that what you're saying? Uh, I was able to enter to my breakout room, but nobody's there. I'm, I'm, I'm alone there. Okay. Sorry, you're, you're cutting out. So you were able to get into your breakout room, but what? Uh, I'm alone. There's... Ah, uh, yeah. So uh, because of the number of groups and the number of participants or students, right, in uh, signing in, you're going to be by yourself. You're in okay. your, you're going to be in, uh, you're going to be talking about uh, point number seven, letting go of your ego. And the way it worked out, you and, and Danielle are going, and it uh, looks like Barb also are going to be working by yourself. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. All right, guys, I think we'll go ahead and stop there. Try to finish up your sentences for tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll look at what we have and we'll continue this uh, activity. Make sure that you are checking each other's work. Make sure that you're checking punctuation, capitalization, subject verb agreement, Checking for commas. When do we use a comma? When do we use a comma after the, before the connector so, because, and but? When do we use a comma? When do we not use a comma? All right, those three connectors are actually two types of connectors, right? So and but are one type, and because is another type. So think of or not, you should use a comma. Also, try to avoid the phrase, it is important. Similarly, try to avoid the phrase, it is necessary, it is vital. In fact, try to avoid, for the most part, the subject pronoun, it. Instead, tell us what it is. All right, so try to avoid alt in, altogether the word important, in all of its forms, importantly, right? Tell us why it's important instead of using the word important. So think about that uh, when you're looking at the, your sentences. Make sure you're following the instructions. Make sure you have a level four heading. Make sure that the sentences are single spaced and they're numbered one through three. 
And uh, tomorrow we're going to continue this activity. We're going to uh, continue looking at the examples that you have. We'll do one more activity to uh, finish for the week. Uh, but if you have not done so already, please go ahead and complete the sentences. And tomorrow we'll continue this activity and uh, try to combine the two concepts, love and wisdom. Any questions about today's activity? Mm, yes, I have a question, Ben. Yes. Can I use the word um, essential? Yeah, so for me, that's very similar to important because probably you're going to say something like, it is essential, it is vital, it is important. So I would ask that you not use it. I would rather you tell us what makes it essential, what makes it important, what makes it uh, vital, right? For me, these are all pretty much the same way of saying something was, is, is important. But instead of telling us the word or using the word important, tell us what, why it's important, tell us when is it, it's important, tell us with whom it is important, right? Again, without trying to use the word like important or essential or vital. Okay, thank you. All right, you're welcome. Any other questions, guys, about today's activity? Ben, I use the word important, but I don't know if it is okay or because I. Yeah, so I would, I, important, this is a, a word that I tell all writers. Doesn't matter what the class is, whether it's a writing class in trope, whether it's a writing class in third, fourth, or fifth semester, seventh semester, eighth semester. We, uh, we tend to overuse the word important instead of telling us why the thing is important. So I would ask that you try to avoid the word altogether. Never use the word important, right? Because we can, it forces us to think more descriptively. It forces us to say, okay, what makes it important? When you say empathy is important, all right, don't tell us that empathy is important. Don't tell us, show us, right? It's the difference between telling something and showing something. So I can say something, instead of saying empathy is important, I can say empathy allows one to experience and feel what the other person has experienced, right? So I just change it to has, I change the verb. I could use all kinds of different verbs instead of the verb to be and and the word uh, important, right? Empathy, right? Empathy allows teachers to understand students' perspective in their day-to-day -day class, right? So I'm trying to find other words. I'm thinking about other descriptive verbs and adjectives and adverbs and objects, other language that I can use to replace, in this case, the verb to be in the adjective important. It's like saying, uh, oh, that person's nice, right? The word nice, right? That's another word that's like, well, what do you mean exactly, right? Are you talking about the person's personality, the individual's personality? Are you talking about the person's uh, appearance, right? And, and what about the person's personality or the person's experience? Uh, um, what they look like, their appearance, right? Can you describe it? Adjectives, right? And again, this is why I'm asking all my learners, and I've done this for years, is try to avoid it. Why? Because it forces us into thinking, okay, what other words can I use? It's like overusing the verb to be or to have, right? The tendency is to overuse the verb to be and the verb to have. Well, there are other ways that we can ex use other verbs that are more descriptive and, and really allow us to show versus tell. All right. So when you're saying, oh, this is important, you're telling me, you're telling the reader, hey, this is important, but show us, right? If you can show, then you're going to be, I think, in most cases, uh, better off. And I know at first it's a little hard, it's, di it's difficult. And it kind of forces us into a space where maybe we're, you know, but this is precisely why I'm asking because most of the time it's super easy to say, oh, it's important, this is important, and this is important, importantly, important, important, important. And then before you know it, the whole test 
the text has important sprinkled all throughout and you're you end up not saying very much if it's not important don't say it everything you say or write i should say everything that you write should be important otherwise don't say it show don't tell right hope hopefully that that makes sense guys any other questions Okay, tomorrow we're going to have time in class to continue working on these. Try to uh, at least have your first draft of your sentences completed. But if it's um, not, if you're still making some changes, we can uh, work on that tomorrow in class with your teams. But please check each other's work, those of you who are working in teams. And um, I'm going to try to go through those who are working individually to leave a little bit of feedback so you can uh, uh, take that into consideration when you're making any final changes to your sentences. All right, guys, I think we'll stop there for today. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to all of you uh, tomorrow in class at 9 o'clock. All right? Take care. Bye. Thanks, bye. Thanks.